This video details the steps to convert a gas mower to battery electric. Here's the converted mower. It has two 48 volt 50 amp hour batteries and an 8000 watt electric motor. It costs less than $3,500 to perform the conversion. I purchased this new mower from Bradley Mowers. They shipped it to me without the gas engine. Now let's get into um, the steps to do the conversion. The diagram here shows the mounting holes. There are eight. We only use the outer four. They are each 3 8 inch. Here's the metal plate diagram and of course the actual metal plate. You can use transfer screws to mark your holes. When you're working with electricity, wear protective gloves and be careful. Control panel, uh, voltmeter. This is the original switch. I still use that. Uh, these switches here, I had to add, these are the attendant switches, right? And when it's depressed, it has to be depressed for the mower to start. And then once it's let go, the mower will automatically shut off. You notice I put in some screws on here. This is a little I'm not crazy about this solution, but it works. I had to have these, these had to be a little, I needed more depth here. And so that's what I got. Um, that way it activates my switch. Because these are not the original switches. Same manufacturer, but uh, the original switch was normally closed. I had to have an, oh, a normally open switch. So that's what I got. Normally open switches, same cable, uh, same connector as previously. Uh, this is our voltage uh, converter. Uh, it converts 48 volts to 12 volts because most of the switches, almost all the switches work on 12 volts except for the key switch. Key switch is running on 48 volts. Uh, we move over here. This is the low voltage disconnect. Uh, this is the device that uh, uh, keeps the um, batteries from being damaged. Okay, so here's how it works. Uh, as the battery is being discharged, once the battery gets below a certain set uh, voltage, the low voltage disconnect will shut the mower off automatically. Currently, this is set for 40 volts. So whenever the mower, uh, the battery gets to 40 volts, it will automatically shut off the mower. This mower uses two relays. Uh, this one's normally um, open and the other one is a normally closed relay. This is the walk switch. This is a normally um, closed switch. It works the opposite of the other switches. Um, so what I mean by that, of course, is that when this is in neutral, uh, the switch is actually deactivated, right? It breaks the connection. When it's in any other gear, that's when it allows electricity to flow through the switch. Okay, but to start the mower, uh, the walk switch has to be, or the walk switch here, has to be neutral, which breaks this connection. And that's why this is connected to the normally closed relay. All right, here's another look at the blade switch. And when the uh, blade is uh, in the off position, it activates that switch. And when the blade is turned in the on position, it opens up that switch. It has to be like that, triggered for the mower to start.
these these rods that go through here. There's four rods, and they're each 11 inches long, and they have uh, the double nuts. Uh, we have locking washers and locking nuts. So here's another look at the uh, how the batteries attach to the frame. Uh, the L, aluminum L bracket, um, double nutted on the ends, and this to the frame. These are one inch, number 20, quarter inch uh, bronze screws with the coarse locking washers and uh, stainless steel nut. Uh, of course, this is the uh, the balancer for the charger uh, input, uh, the input cable. Uh, I could have used a, a bigger one, but this is adequate. Um, and of course, everything's sealed. I uh, used um, shrink tubing here, and then I also used um, some electrical tape, and likewise here. Now again on the cabling, you can see my uh, my input cables come into um, uh, this uh, tubing here, um, and then it's also got uh, electrical tape on it all the way through, especially through the hole here. Ideally, I'd have a grommet here because uh, this is going to this this metal here is sharp, and it really should use a should have a grommet. And of course, you can see on this side the negative here. Um, I used electrical um, glue, or not electrical glue, but a liquid, liquid electrical tape here on that. And a little bit over here, it's coming off on that side. Uh, anyway, it comes down, and it's um, we have um, electrical tape going into this tubing here, and the electrical tape goes all the way through to the other end. And uh, then we're using secure uh, to secure it to the sides here. You can see we use those there. That one has come off down there. I'm going to glue that back on. Uh, now, you can see down here, this, this comes down here. There is a slot in the frame of the ca uh, case here for that. I should have done similarly on the other side, but I didn't. I actually um, did a, uh, a hole in the side, which complicates things a little bit because that means before you put this, before you put the case on now, before you put this cover on, you have to feed this this cable through the ca um, the cover and attach it. And so again, this is the outside cover for the front battery, and you can see how it's uh, we cut the metal here, and then it's indented along here, and then it's uh, out here a little ways. We have uh, screw holes here, and. And on this side, you see the my uh, my cabling, positive cable that goes to the other battery and then to the motor. As you can see, this is the uh, where the wire comes out of the battery in the front of the mower, and of course, this is our charge connector here. All right, here's one charger that we use. Uh, this is 30 amps. Uh, it costs about $380, and you can see it has, of course, matching connectors here. Uh, these these high power chargers uh, require 220 volts input, and that's these kind of connectors are required. Okay, this is our top cover for the battery that's closest to the uh, control panel. It's held on. I've already taken them off by three um, sheet metal screws. There are number eight screws, and of course, there's two uh, number eight machine screws on each side. Let's just lift this up. So you can see this top cover is made the same way as all the other covers and the instructions are included. Okay, so now we're looking at the battery, how it's held down. We see uh, again we have this uh, one bolt here, but actually we have more than one bolt. You can see that that one bolt is right here, but then there's another bolt, a smaller one here, and you'll notice on these metal plates, right? So we have this cover here. We have this cover, 
that's the bottom here and then above that is the frame and then above that is a thin a per fairly thin uh, this is the one I added right this is a steel plate I think in hindsight I'd make that just a little thicker and then of course sitting on top of that is our L bracket and this screw which is meant to hold this on is actually also holding in place our thin metal plate as well again uh, batteries held on identical to the other one uh, we got double nuts and these are locking uh, nuts here it's also this whole thing is laying on top of a metal plate uh, this plate here as steel and then an, an a aluminum L bracket here that uh, helps fits onto the uh, top cover here's our uh, contactor and uh, our 250 amp fuse I believe yeah 250 amp fuse they're both screwed into the metal plate um, and of course our uh, other stuff here a balancer just like the other one had um, notice how we have three wires coming in here this is interesting three positives and three negatives okay this is our uh, little uh, like maybe a 5 amp fuse and that 5 amp fuse is going to go to all of our electronics uh, on the control panel uh, so we don't blow a fuse there um, this cable comes from the um, of the other battery and this is our output output to the fuse and then the uh, that this output goes to the fuse and then the fuse comes back to the contactor contactor then goes to the motor a negative that comes from the uh, this comes from the other battery uh, this is our output to the control panel and this is our output to um, uh, where does this go to? That goes to our contactor. Our contactor has, yeah, forgot about that. And importantly, this has a diode on it. And the diode's facing away from the negative goes into pairs up of the positives here so the negative has a again this is the negative from the battery and there's a splitter here the splitter one side of the splitter goes to the diode the other side of the splitter goes right to the contactor uh, the positive side is going to go to the contactor goes to our control panel that goes to our switches up here it's also on both batteries there is a uh, big tie strap around both batteries that's just to help keep cabling in place I've cut out an area here for this plate uh, cut it out so I can have my cabling come straight up from the motor and then uh, I've got screws here here and here that hold the L bracket this is a thin L bracket and again uh, these hold this L bracket place the front of the L bracket has uh, drilled out holes for my sheet metal screws to go through and you can see how we've cut kind of cut a little place here and at this side not not quite the same and so you can see on this side of the battery we've also got a, a notch cut into and we got some a little, a little tricky here we got the metal plate and the L bracket and we've cut a little off of the L bracket and we got a big gap here this is junk that used to be where cable went through but that was yeah Okay, so I've kind of reassembled what I did here. 
Uh, this is a metal sheet for the motor box. And so I have two sheets. One of them uh, goes on, is going to go on the back. That's the sheet. This will go on the back. And this is going to go on the front. And because it has to, because it's going to go on the front of this, the bend is going to be on the back. So I had to draw another line on the back of this sheet. You can see how it lines on the, this front side. I also do a line on the back to, to bend it uh, for this for this bend that's covering. So this will be on the front of the line. Okay. okay, we're looking at the back of the motor housing. And uh, I had to drill out some big holes for the uh, cabling go to into, in and out of the motor. Um, it's just like all the other boxes. It has some mesh. This one I use machine screws to secure it. Uh, and again, everything's the same. Machine screws holding the uh, half inch tubes in place. This one has the do not fold, right? We didn't fold this last piece here. This piece goes down in front and actually screws into the frame. We have uh, two cables coming into the motor. One of these cables goes to the front battery. And the other cable, of course, goes to the uh, battery nearest the controls. And of course, uh, yeah, the other, the other one, this goes up to the uh, battery. Here's the uh, cover for the belt, uh, the belt drives uh, for the blades assembly. All right, and I had to do a cutout here. And these cutouts are about uh, five inches in on each side. And, and they're about two inches, a little bit more than two inches, two and a quarter inch.